and let's save this project. It opened up on another screen. Lightbox. Let's go into this face curie measure demo. I'm not going to save it because I already did. And let's take a look at the demo head. You can always just load demo head into your model or into your scene. You just go Lightbox, Tool, and you just load demo head. Close Lightbox, and he'll be there. So this guy has topology. I'm going to click Polyframe. He's organized. His lowest resolution level is 3.5 thousand. You can see the edge loop around the eye, edge loop around the nose. He was done using Z-spheres, an old Z-sphere algorithm, which I'll introduce to you. But that's organized. So if I turn Polyframe off and I look at him from a distance, and uh, let's go into the Draw palette, and I'm going to say Align to Object. I'm going to set my focal view to 50. If he's at a, a distance like this, there's almost no difference between that. There's almost no difference from 3,000 to 50,000 because he's organized. So this is a great thing for keeping stuff together, but let me show you the problem. And uh, you can really see, let me see if I can remember, um, uh, Rich Diamond did a, uh, let me write this down so you can Google it. Rich Diamond did a really interesting paper when he was at Naughty Dog on uh, reprojecting and dealing with refitting, that's what they called it, refitting topology. I'll put that in the hub. But what you really want to notice is how the polygons don't really flow like they should. See, they come in and then out. And so if you're doing displacement mapping, this can be a little bit of a problem. If you're doing animation, it's just not behaving crystal clear. That edge is not perfect at the high and at the low. And then, you know, here it's fine. You can see, you know, you get the eye out there, but that red line that I just draw drew, that does not stay the break or the edge in which uh, your front facing and then downward facing planes uh, end up being. That starts to twist and turn. And that's a big problem. Now let's come in here and start to see if we can sculpt a little bit of this eye here. I'm going to come in here. You know, we can get in and we can work this form. But let's say I really just want to change the entire structure of the eye. I'm going to smooth all of this out. And I'm not happy. And I'm going to come in here with a clay brush and, and build that eye on top of him again. This is, I just, I need to get in and design this eye. I'm just not happy with the way it's working. Not happy with the side. I really want that eye to be a little bit lazy, have the skin coming down over the top of it. Just by doing this, I have now completely gone off the reservation. I'm going to draw in red where my form changes are. And then in green, follows some of that crazy topology. You know, it doesn't match up, right? So the question is, do we sweat the topology? And at what point do we sweat the topology? If you're designing, don't organize. The problems you might have are that you need more resolution in one area, you need less resolution in an area, but don't sweat it because you can always 
always recast topology. And then wait and save this kind of detail work of topology, getting it right for output until you're at that stage. Like, for example, a sculptor, they work in clay. Clay, if they want, it'll go to a plaster uh, um, original. And then the plaster gets, and you get a wax out of that, and that goes to bronze. This is a huge component. This is a huge component. Do you think the guy who's working in clay is thinking about wax and bronze? What do you guys think? If you're thinking about clay and you're designing, are you thinking about wax and bronze? You might. Is it going to be able to hold up? But are you planning for it at every stage, making sure that you know this is going to be there? Or do, is it just like a guideline? Well, can I even make that in bronze? How much would you be thinking about the bronze? My thought is that you're not going to be so focused on it that it's going to direct everything you do and get in the way of, of your design. You're not going to let the end product affect your design. You're going to make your design work, and that's your primary thing. So topology is a production thing, but don't let it affect your design because that's you. You're the designer, not bronze. So it's a guide. Topology is a guide. But look at what I do next. I'm just going to come into this thing, Q remesher. And I'm going to leave it at default and I'm just going to go Q remesh. That's it. I'm just pressing that one button. I'm going to talk to you a lot more about this Q remesher. Don't worry. We're going to talk a lot about it. But these tools are what Pixelogic is working on for the next generation. I've completely redone the topology. Let's go back. That was before, after, before, after. I lost some detail. But I don't have to. I can show you how to keep that detail. But I have better topology for sculpting. And I've just quickly pulled and pushed and pulled. So in the future, topology is not going to be a big issue for you. You're really going to get in there and just design. And then you'll start to pull things together. You're going to have automatic tools to help you. And I'm going to make sure you know all about how to be doing that and working with it. So let's look, what's our next piece? 